righteousness is going to be the key to our life. The Lord says. He says we must follow instructions. Also, wisdom is the key for life and health. If we tend to go out into the world and we don't know the word or our instructions from God or wisdom, how will we be able to endure in the world and in the afflictions that come before us? But this way, by following God's instructions, that we will be able to endure when the hard times come. Even before the hard times come, we'll be able to endure because we know the word coming from God. And we know his word. His word will be embedded in us. That seed, that implanted seed in us will carry us throughout our generation here. And it will give us precious keys to God where he will know who we are because we have obeyed his instructions. Wisdom comes from God. <clears throat> Amen. And we must have the instructions. Everybody say instructions. The instructions. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do some little work today, y'all. We're going to be a little in various places of the word of God today. Let's go to Proverbs. Amen. I want to walk y'all through how the Lord brought me up. When I was in the world, and I had to take it step by step, and he sure talked to me through the word to get me balanced and focused before I was able to hear his word through the heart and through my spirit to be able to accept him. But the Lord will give you his word to be able to break the ice so he can deal with you in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because the word alone needs the Holy Spirit. Also needs a body to be able to accept all the gifts that come from God. Amen. 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 So we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 12. Amen. And I'm going to just, and I want y'all to take notes too. Because this will help you. We're going to be doing a lot, of, a lot of things that the Lord used to get me in the position where he can bring his Holy Spirit to me to be able to speak what he wants me to speak and to understand. Because if we have no understanding, then we cannot follow instructions. So if you don't have understanding, how are you going to follow instructions? And God, when he talked to us to be able to dictate to us what we need to do in his body. Because we have many works to do. If we are to do his works, we must understand them. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the Lord says, and say, how I have hated instructions. And I know many, many people, this is a Hindu for them. And it's a stoppage for them because when we get instructions, we, we sometimes that wicked one come and try to tell us that don't listen to that. That's not right. That's not correct. But if it's coming from the true word of God, your spirit will gain it. It will accept it. And you will feel the fire of the Lord coming in to be able to confirm the word of his. Amen. Because it cannot be copied. Anything of God can be copied. It's pure. It's God. It's truth. And it's also edification in God that your body will warm to the word that he gives you. Amen. Amen. Instructions. And my heart. So your heart is the key to everything that God want to bring to you. Because first, the heart got to receive truth, meaning love, from God. Amen. See, God is love and love is God. God. So if he's giving you this through the heart, which will by all means destroy anything that the mind is trying to tell you, because the heart can't lie. The heart will tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. So we must understand the heart. The heart is a very, very important key to everything about God. It comes with the instructions too. Because if God is handing you something that he wants you to do, whether you're in the shopping center, or you're in a line, or you have passed someone and God has told you to turn around, but your mind is telling you don't turn around. But your heart is telling you turn around because these instructions is from God. Edifying the truth. You will turn around and you will be aid to that person that need help. Because you have obeyed God. Therefore, you are filling your works in the book of life. Because God will surely put your works in his book. Amen? Amen. 
How I have hated instructions, and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice <clears throat> of my teachers. See, I look at myself in this because when my mom was bringing me up, we would go to church and we would just sit there and pray. Or we wouldn't listen to the word that was given. So we can't always blame what's in the pulpit, whether it's right or not. But being able to link your spirit with God, that is what you're looking for. You're looking for that word that he's giving you. That's out of his, his edification words. Because God is the word and the word is God. God amen. These are the keys that we to look for. But we go and we look for things and we try to pick out things that's not right in their eyes. Remember, your eyes can be fooled because God might have given you the keys for them to be open yet. So you're seeing things that are incorrect. But your heart has to be open to be able to receive the true word is for you. Right. And God will not forsake you because he wants you to know the truth. Amen. Even if he give you delusions that day, he wants you to be able to sort out what's good and what's not good. But your spirit will gain it. Amen. 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 No incline my eye to those who instruct me. So I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and the congregation. So when I think about this in my time when I was with various, various organizations that had nothing to do with church, I find myself tripping all the time and having problems with people due to the fact that that ain't where I was supposed to be at. I was not supposed to be there. I was supposed to be in the house of the Lord. But see, what I'm trying to do is replace that for something of man, not understanding that the keys is with the body of Christ. Amen. You Amen. can't replace that. You have to find yourself in the house of the Lord. Amen. Where he can dictate and give you what you need to have. But we try to find it in so many places. Sometimes we try to find it in man. Sometimes we try to find it in materialistic things. Sometimes we try to find it in people, not even a grown-up, but a child. You're not going to find it there. You have to get in the house of the Lord and find out what your duties are and put them duties forth where you can have peace within your spirit. Amen. Amen. So these are the things that I had to focus on in God, in my spirit, to be able to lock my spirit in with God. So he can dictate the things that I need to do in him. Amen. Amen. Also, we want to go to uh, 521. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21. So everywhere I'm taking you today, the Lord has taken me to to help me when I was coming up in the world. To be able to get myself ready to be able to receive him. Amen. 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 All right. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And what the Lord is telling you is this is that you will trip way before you even look to him. Because you're looking for earthly things and not heavenly things. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking for heavenly things, then you won't have these problems because God will make sure he covers you. He will send the right angels to you to be able to protect you, to be able to guide you through the places that you need to go through for him. Amen. So 21, y'all, I want us to read it together because I want it to sink in. Mm. I want it to sink into us. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready? Amen. Read. For, For the ways, ways of man, man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he honors all his paths. So see, everything that you have been made up is predestined for you to serve God, not yourself. Because God will take care of you. But your job is to take care of his things that he wants you to do for him. Amen. So what we do first is we always worry about ourselves first. When I first get up in the morning, the first thing I do is I look to God and say, thank you for your spirit of life. Yes, because every time you get up in the morning, you breathe in the spirit of life God had put in you. Yes, Lord. At any given time, he can take it away. Yes, Amen. It's not guaranteed to you. But the reason why he continued to give it to you so you will have a change to change out of your wickedness. Yes. And your deceitful lust. Of the things of the world. Mm. That's why. So he gives you a chance day to day to try to come and revel with him and to be able to destroy any unclean thoughts or spirits that's in you. Remember now, y'all, this is a spiritual warfare. Yes. We're dealing with principalities and powers. Yes. 
We're not dealing with earthly things and earthly men. And let me tell you, the devil will come to you in many kind of ways. Yes. In some ways, you think it's from God. But your heart, your spirit will discern that. It will gain it. It will let you know this ain't right. Amen. I don't care how good it is. Somebody might be walking to you to hand you something that you, ain't, you don't have. But you thinking it's from God. Mm -hmm. Now understand it. That ain't from God. That's somebody trying to get in to disrupt and kill, steal, and destroy you. Amen. When it comes from God, trust me. It won't be as given as easy as you think it is. What have you done to earn it? Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. You don't think somebody did the Lord just going to hand you something without mm. you giving something? Mm. You have to give something. Yes, you Lord. have to commit your time in yes. the Christ. Yes. How are you going to do that? By being a giver and not a receiver. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you always want to receive and not be a giver, then you ain't never going to walk into the line of God. Amen. Because he said, the more you give up, the more I will give you. Amen. But even that, even still that, comes with a price. That you still must be correcting your deeds. Yes. Which means you cannot let the mind dictate and tell you what you need to do that ain't in God. Amen. I found it in everybody. I found it in me. On my time coming up, I seen it. The Lord gave me the gift. He woke me up from it. I said, hey, I got you now, devil. I know what you look like. Mm -hmm. I know what you sound like. Mm -hmm. So you ain't just going to come and give me something to be able to let that spirit come in my house and inflict me. Amen. Because let me tell you something. Nothing can come before you to destroy you unless you invite it. Yes. yes. Amen. You have to invite that unclean spirit right. in your house. Yes. In your space. You have the power. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything. Hmm. But when you take things that is not of God and you bring that into your house, hmm. you have brought curses upon your family. Yes. Yeah. Because them curses will manifest out of whatever they're giving you. Yeah. Let me tell you, even if the angels are standing door to door, hmm. they cannot overrule you. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. They cannot. Because God didn't put the angels before you. They are here to protect you and look over you. Yes. They're there. You might think they ain't there, but they, they trust me, they're even the ones that will draw the sword on you at any time and cut you in two. Mm -hmm. Because you have not obeyed the voice of your God. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you things today will help you in your spirit. So these things that we do, that we accept into our household, will come and kill, steal, and destroy us. Amen. So please make sure we're just not taking anything that somebody has given us when it's not from God. Amen. Because some various things will come into your family and they will cause all kind of problems. The next thing you know, you've got sicknesses. you got death. Hatred. Hmm. Fornication. Lust. That you didn't just invite it in your house and you don't even know where it came from. But you invited it in there when you accepted that unclean gift. Mm -hmm. Remember, it cannot come into your house unless you welcome it. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. We're going to do 22 together. And I want us to understand that whatever you hear in this word today, I want you to keep it. And I want you to understand it comes from God. God has given me to give you. So you'll be able to have the tools to be able to fight that wicked one. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to go to 22. Ready? Read. His own iniquities and traps the wicked man. And he is caught in the cords of his sin. Just talking about it. One thing I want us to understand that it might don't look right in your eyes when it comes to God because He don't want it to. Mm -hmm. It don't supposed to look lovely, pretty, and beautiful when you say, "Oh yeah, I know this from God." No, it's supposed to look totally the opposite. Amen. Because if it always looked the good, how He's gonna really know if you are who you say you are or if you're gonna be one with Him? Amen. It could be a trick. God's not making them mistakes no more, y'all. <laughs> He's not making them mistakes. He's Amen. not going to get himself in the position where he got to kick somebody out of heaven like Satan because he trusted him. Amen. Now, we have to prove ourselves. Amen. We have to prove ourselves. How are we going to prove it? By our works. Yes. And what we speak out of our mouth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. Lord. I sit back and... Sometimes I focus on the word so hard when the woman of God is up here preaching it because I'm not looking at the woman of God. What she wearing or what she look like. 
You know what I'm doing? I'm listening very well to see what word God is telling me. Yes. I, I encourage every pastor to sit down in that seat and listen to the word of God because he needs it. Amen. I don't know how have most of them think that they don't that they're above the law. They don't have to sit and worship it. Yes, you do. And if you're not working according to the, the, the prophecies and the will of God, you will lose your way. Amen. And you will find yourself in detrimental despair. You will find yourself in that problem. So what I try to do is I try to be one with God and have a relationship. Not saying that I'm overly righteous or under under righteous, but in the middle. Well, I can receive him and give the love that he gives me to someone else. Amen. Amen. To be able to show that love in that person so they can see the Christ in me. That's Amen. how it works. Amen. 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 It's a key word that I want to be able to go forth in 23. We're going to read 23 together too. And we're going to talk a little bit about this word that's in here. And we're going to call it out. Amen. Amen. 23. Ready? Read. He shall die for lack of instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Now, this word instructions must be very important to us. And I think sometimes we overlook this. But let's talk about folly. And I want to tell y'all what it means. It means good senses. That's what that means. It means to be able to understand and have common sense. Because you can be book smart all you want. You might have went to college for four years, five, six, seven, eight years. But if you ain't got that common sense, I'm sorry. It's going to be hard for you to move anywhere dealing with God. Remember, God deals with his spirit and the way he thinks might not be book way. And I'm not talking about the Bible. Because the word is God and God is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I have studies that we go to school to do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we take that and we try to blend it. Now understand, common sense is a powerful thing. When God said good senses, which entrapped us many times in our fold. Mm -hmm. So know that we must have understanding. We must have that. We must have wisdom. And wisdom only comes from one person, and that's God. Amen. Many people think wisdom comes from age. That's not true. It comes from God giving you wisdom. And sometimes you have to trip and fall, break a heel, or twist your ankle in order for you to learn what you're not supposed to do. And it ain't just come from just it happened to you. Believe me, God then gave it to you. So that's why I always say even when we ask for wisdom, we must understand that we're asking for something to come upon us so we can learn from it. Amen. Which is good. And this is some of the stuff we need to have. Don't be afraid of it. Accept it into your life. Because these are the things that's going to make us better people. It's going to make us better servants of God. And it's going to make us better lovers of God. So see, God don't just want just a relationship. He wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants to be where he is first in your life. And he's first always. Amen. And I think we owe it to him. We owe that to God for even creating us in the sight of his powers and giving us all kind of help. He do it. So I say today, we must thank God and his love that he has given us to be able to love someone else and not look at their lack, the things that they lack or the things that they have problems with. Husband and wives, understanding things that is some things you will have, your husband don't have. But God did this on purpose to be able to make the two come together. Because what you don't have, your husband has. And what your husband don't have, your wife will have. But see, he'll work this for two to keep them needing each other so they will stay in love. Remember, it's all a test to see how we're going to handle each other here versus handling him in heaven. Because if we handle him like we handle each other here, then by no means are we going to be able to get in heaven. So that's something we must, uh, we must understand. Amen? Amen. And I like to go and, and, and show y'all what God taught me. And uh, I know y'all are going to listen really, really well to it because I know it will help you too. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4. Amen. And I love it because I go back and I look at it sometimes and I say how far it has brung me. And it has brung me so far because we have to listen 
to what the Lord is teaching us. Amen? Amen. That's uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4. He also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my word.